Hey, it's Clay. I'm going to do another video on my XFX2. This time I want to talk specifically about uh, creating and setting up presets. Um, basically, I've gotten to a point where I've kind of figured out what I really like. I've experimented with a bunch of different things, and I think I've had the XFX for almost two years now, um, and very, very much enjoyed my time with it. But I think it, I was just thinking it might be helpful for some of you to uh, see how I set up patches if you're curious because I tend to kind of have like a system for how I set up patches and there's been a lot of little things that I've picked up that might be helpful to those of you out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through how I create my patches um, and I'll kind of show off what I'm talking about. I've got my strat hooked up here. I'll try to get some recordings in and just try to really um, go in depth to explain all these different things about why I make the choices I make when I'm setting up a preset. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. I'll just go front to back, and if there's something you're specifically interested, I'm going to start this way and work my way all to the end, so you can keep that in mind. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. First things first is I typically turn my noise gate off. I just really do not like having a noise gate, so that's my personal preference. If if you set it really low, it's, it's usually okay, but um, I just am not a big fan. It tends to clamp dynamics and those types of things. Um, first things first is my volume. I have this set for a volume pedal. The key thing to know here is that um, this little yellow guy, if you right click on it and then you click source, this is what you need to kind of set up. Um, right now it's on external one because that is what is connected through MIDI to my foot switch. I'm using the Behringer FCB1010 um, and so that's set up there works pretty nicely. Um, I think I have another preset where I also will use, let's see what this one does. Okay, so I've got another one where I have a wah too. Um, this one actually might be a better example, but this is the same thing. So I've just, this was set up to external one, and then this one is set up to, ex oh wait a minute, for some reason they're both on external one. Well that's not right. We want this one in an external two. Um, so what that does is it lets me use both of my foot switches to control um, the volume pedal or the wah. Pretty nice setup. Works pretty well. Um, now one thing I have noticed, and I don't know if this is like a quirk with the way my anything works, but if I switch to this preset, it will actually be dead until I sweep the volume pedal one time through, and then the sound will come through. I don't exactly know why that is, but it's just kind of a little quirk that I've noticed um, in what, what I do. Sometimes I just leave it off. It kind of depends what I'm playing and where. Sometimes I want it, sometimes I don't. Um, but anyways, if you're looking to set up volume pedal, that's a nice way to do it. Um, next up, I've got my two drive pedals. I almost always use two drives. Um, I typically will have one that's more of a boost. I'll either use the Fed boost, or sometimes I'll use the TS-808 OD. Um, and then if I do that, what I'm basically trying to get here is you see this level control is way high. That's the most important thing about these boosts. Now, um, I might also probably, yeah, I probably want the fuzz in front here. Um, but this is drive two. Drive two is always associated with the boost. So, you know, the drive and tone settings don't really matter as much. I just want a lot of level. And the idea is that I want to hit the front end of the amp really hard. And this is actually a pretty realistic, um, it, you know, the, the, the way that a hot signal hits the front end of an amp is pretty tough to capture, but I think the XFX does a really nice job. And if you want to run a boost, I really recommend this FET boost, run the level way high, and pretty much other than that, I don't, don't touch anything. Um, and then my other pedal, I usually use a fuzz face. I really like the fuzz face model on the XFX2. The, one of the important things though is to keep the drive low. I know on a real fuzz face you'll probably want to crank the drive up to about 10 and the level. You're like This is a pretty realistic fuzz face setting. But I found that, um, and why don't I actually just go ahead and show you a little bit. Um, why don't I show you the boost first? I forgot I actually... <laughs> And then the fuzz. And 
is uh, I'm just cleaning up with my guitar volume. Actually cleans up really nicely. Um. But if you get the fuzz, the drive knob up too high. Turn the volume down. Uh, I just don't care for that. It's a little bit too much for my tastes. Um, it does get cleaner, but I really like to have be able to get it to an actual clean-ish tone. Um, so yeah, I do bump the tone up a little bit, and then I mess with the EQ just slightly. I want a little more mids and treble just to help it cut through the mix. Sometimes with fuzz pedals, they tend to get lost a little bit because there's so much gain and compression happening. So if you cut the bass, boost the mids, boost the treble, you get a little bit more of a fuzz that will cut through the mix, which I really like. Okay, let's get to the amp block. Um, now the amp and cab block, the next two, are the most important uh, parts of this whole chain. Um, now my favorite amp block is the Plexi 100 watt high. There are a lot of really good amps. I mean, I used the 1987 for a while. I've used the the Basement is a really good amp. I mean, there are like literally more good amp models than I even have time to play with. Um, the ODS Clean I really like. Um, Deluxe Tweet is really neat. The the AC30, AC15 are really good sounding. Sir Badgers are some good ones. Um, I've used the, uh, the Super Reverb quite a bit. I mean, there's just this one right here. There's so many good amp models. Uh, the Trainwreck is a neat amp model. So so many good different amp models to use. Um, for cleans out, you can't get better than the uh, the Double Verb. The Fender Twin Reverb is really nice. There just are so many good amp models. I've just gotten used to using the 100 watt high Plexi. It just suits my ear. It's got that nice classic rock, um, you know. <laughs> Um, it's, it cleans up really nicely. Just a very nice amp model all around. A couple things to keep in mind. Um, with a lot of these knobs, you can pretty much just set it to taste. Um, I like to keep the drive somewhere between 5 and 7. I like to get run the bass down a little bit and the mids and treble up a little bit with the bright switch on. That tends to be a setting I really like with single coil pickups. Uh, this is a Strat. I run a very similar setup with my Tele. Um, I don't tend to do a ton. You can mess around with some of these controls, but I don't really find that there's really all that need to do it. Um, you, it you can get a lot of very subtle changes to the way that the amp feels mostly not a tremendous amount I mean but basically with these you know these three controls and the bright switch maybe the cut switch you can get pretty much everything you would ever want master up on 10 it's just a really good straightforward classic rock amp um, and I would say for mo the most part with a lot of these amps you know they're really straightforward if you know anything about the amp in real life a lot of that's going to translate into um, you know the Axe effects because it's it's pretty spot on. So um, that's I can't think if there's anything else that I would say about the amp block. It's pretty straightforward. Now for the cab block, one of the things that I have found is that I have found so this F one hundred three stock cab four by twelve basket weave TV mix is hands down my favorite IR or uh, cab. I guess whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's, it's definitely my favorite. There are a lot of other really good ones too. I've tried the TV Mix 4 by 12 TV Mix number 2 from the, the new Ultra Resolution ones, and that's a really good one. I've got some custom ones loaded in. I, basically, I would say that this is one of the most important things to experiment on. Um, going through these cabs is really important, and you'll, you know, this is, 
you know, I said that this is pretty straightforward. You just kind of set it and forget it. This is the place where you really want to find something you like and something that sounds good to your ear, that, that most importantly, that feels really good. Because this is where a tremendous amount of change and, and you know, getting the amp to sound and feel like what you want, you probably, if, if it doesn't sound like what you want, you probably won't have the right cab emulation. And you really got to um, put the time in to find the cab that you like. And for me, I've settled on this 4x12 Basket Wave TV mix. I don't change anything. Um, I leave it totally stock, and this is the cab that I like. This amp and this cab are tested for me, proven for me, to be workhorses. Okay, from here, we get into some interesting things. Um, what I have is two delays in re reverb. Um, so, so I have a dotted eighth of delay, I've got a quarter delay, and then I've got just a medium room re reverb. And you'll notice that I, what I do is I keep the dry signal running all the way through. And this was something that, um, the reason I did this is when I was messing around with different delays and stuff, I would find that sometimes when I would engage a delay, um, it would kind of mess with the perceived output of the dry signal. And maybe I was doing something wrong, but, you know, what I would have is the level at zero and the mix at like, I don't know, 20% 20, 20 or something like that. But it just never felt very good. It almost felt like every time I hit the delay, I was kind of losing stuff. And then you'd have to like mess with the level. And it just, it just didn't feel quite right to me. So what I've done instead is it is as if I have um, the dry signal running directly through the entire time. And then what I have is these delays and this reverb that can be inserted alongside the dry signal um, without affecting the dry signal in any way. So um, if you'll note, I'll just mess around with this quarter delay. I'm going to put it on and you'll... If I turn it off... There should have been no difference there in the dry signal and that was really big for me. Um, so what you do is you put it up to its own separate spot uh, uh, up or down from the dry, the dry path um, and then there's a couple of things to note is so it has to go up and then down and I don't like to chain them together I like to make sure that each one has its own independent in and out and then you want to set the mix to a hundred percent and then you want to set the level becomes like your new mix control so I have this dotted eighth set to 6.2 decibels um, And then if I pump this up, it's like I'm turning the mix up on a typical. And then if you turn it down, it'll go away. Um, so that's the way that I have found works really well. Now another thing that you really need to keep an eye on is this bypass mode. So when you have bypass through, that that does is um, the dry when you when you disengage the pedal, the dry signal will run through both, and that will actually cause your signal to be boosted. So listen to this. If I turn this to through, you just got a, a, a boost. And so um, what's happening there is your signal is getting sent to two different places and then rejoining with itself and it's kind of like running in series so it's it's being compounded um, so in order to avoid that change the bypass mode I've gone to mute effects out you can go ahead to the um, the, the release notes or the wiki page and it'll tell you exactly what each one of them does but the basic idea with this effects out is when you have the this thing disengaged this chain right here is as if it, it doesn't exist um, the, 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 the signal will stop right here at the end of this pedal and not go through. And so uh, I have the same thing set with this delay, but then um, the only difference I have here is that I'm also running a chorus. So, um, so this is my dotted eighth delay. I use a digital mono, pretty clean, pretty straightforward, just I want something that's um, very percussive and, and, and authentic. And then for the quarter, I run the mono tape. And I like something that's a little bit dirtier, so I'll put a little bit of the drive on. I've got a little bit of modulation. I even think that I um, will cut down on a little bit of the highs just to give a little more of an analog 
type feel. And then, so same thing, I've got the mute effects in, I'm running the mix at 100%, I've got the level set to taste, and then I run this chorus. So what this is doing is this is only going to chorus the, um, the delay, the wet delay signal. So again, I've got this um, mute effects in, mute effects out. I believe that they functionally uh, perform the same task for this situation. The idea is that when the signal gets split up onto this path, if this delay is disengaged, then everything after it is all just also disengaged, and you don't get that like compounding of your signal to make it even louder. But when you do engage this, now the wet signal, so this is 100% wet, um, the mix is 100%, and then the just the delay signal is also getting some chorus attached to it and so what I the reason I do that is you can get the modulation in here but um, I like to have a little bit more control over the sound of the um, the chorus so I'll just go ahead and try and show that off I'm playing it a little bit of a low volume so then let's try it without the chorus back on. So it's got a little bit of that warble to it. I really like that. Um, it gives it kind of a nice spacious, airy, you know, kind of like a deluxe memory man type thing. And you have a lot more control over it. You can do other things like you could put a reverb or an octave or you can do all sorts of crazy things. And keep in mind that Anything in this chain will only affect the wet delayed signal, so it won't affect the dry signal, which again is really nice. Um, you don't have to worry about you know the, the core tone you get from your amp and your cab being affected by any of the changes you make up here because it's all kind of in its own little compartmentalized chain. And then the same idea with the reverb. Again, mix it 100%, set the level to taste, um, use that become to your new mix control and then use the mute out to make sure that it doesn't compound. I leave the reverb on the whole time, so it wouldn't actually really matter. Um, but, you know, pretty straightforward. The medium room, I really don't change that much. About tw negative 20 is where I found is the good spot for the level 2.5 seconds. Um, now, one thing I also do with the reverb is I use a Y setting, and this changes to cavern with, you know, much higher level longer time, and so this is kind of like my, you know, it gives it a big, like, floating, which I think is kind of neat. Now, again, you can do, I'm going to just go ahead and experiment with this. Uh, let's go ahead and put this in its own chain, and we'll connect this back here, and then let's put, um, let's do, like, an octave. I've never actually tried this before, but pitch. let's do a pitch shift. Um, let's try crystals. I don't even know what this is going to sound like. I, I, I can't really tell, but... Um, <laughs> I got the level a little bit too low here. I didn't want to overpower my mic. But anyways, the idea is the same as with the delays, is that you can put all sorts of neat things on the reverb. You could do a phaser or a chorus. You could give it some modulation if you want. Um, you could set that to a foot switch. You know, a lot of interesting things you can do with all these different functions. So I actually have a button on my pedal board that will switch between the X and Y state on the reverb block, um, which I really like. You know, it gives me, you know, the the more you know standard reverb sound and then more of like an ambient reverb sound. I could also tie another button to this whatever I want to have in the chain here. And um, again, this is only going to be affecting the wet signal. This isn't going to be affecting my dry signal whatsoever. But what I probably would need to do is turn the mix up. Now I bet we'll hear it. Well, I'll probably experiment with that some more and I'll get back to you guys. But again, just a really, um, you know, a lot of different things you can do in terms of using these different patches or these different tracks to affect your signal in a way that you want. Um, now, there are other ways. I was watching some videos, and um, this is another way you can set up, and you can do use ascend and return. And what this does is it gives you more efficient 
you know, use of space. You know, with that other preset, I, there's like all these other blocks that I'm not using. But basically what you're doing is your signal chain runs here. You go into the send. You want to make sure your send level is 100%. And then it will just, you know, follow over here to the return. Again, mix 100%. Pretty easy, straightforward. But again, I, I like to mix in a lot of my effects in their own signal chain. Again, you know, bypass mode, mix, level. These are all set, you know, 100% mix, level to taste. Use the bypass mode to make sure that your dry signal doesn't get compounded. And you can do a lot of neat, interesting things with this. I've got the rotary here on this patch. Um, let's go ahead and hear that. That sounds. I got a little bit of a... I think this patch probably has a little too much going on. Uh, it overcooks the signal a little bit. But um, still, a lot of fun, interesting things that you can do with this type of a setup. You get a lot more space to work with here. Uh, when you're using the send and return, um, you know, a lot of different possibilities of things that you can do with these presets. Now, another thing is I've got, so just in terms of like layout, I've got a bass preset that I found. I've got an acoustic preset that I found that worked really well for me. Um, I just, I think I downloaded them, on, them off of Exchange, Fractal Exchange, and I was just demoing a bunch of them. And these are the ones that worked really well with my gear and to my ear. And then you can see I've got you know, a hundred my one hundred watt Marshall with all of my electric guitars having their own variation. So what this is is, I basically start with the Strat and I you know very subtly will make little changes. You can see this is probably yeah, I think I've got the wah on this one, but you know maybe a phaser. But for the most part, it's pretty much the same in terms of the amp and the cab. But then I'll t tweak the EQ to match the cab or the the amp to match the guitar. Um, so, you know, it just gives me, whenever I've, I've, I've got a very, whenever I'm switching to a guitar, I can have a preset that's optimized for it, but that's also very familiar between each guitar, which I really like. Now, other things that you can do that I personally do not is you can use scenes, which I don't use scenes very much. I tend to be the type of person who um, sets a preset like this, and I'll use the, my, the volume knob on my guitar, I'll use my two drive pedals, my delay, my reverb, and that'll take me all the way from clean to crunch, to lead, to ambient, to rhythm, um, ever in between can be covered just with this preset. But you can use scenes if you're somebody who needs to make more drastic sound changes, like if you're in like a cover band and you need to do, um, you know, a Van Halen song, and the next is Metallica, and the next is a country song. You know, if you need that type of uh, versatility, you can use scenes to do a lot more powerful things and to choose which effects go on and off with just the click of one button. Um, instead of, whereas right now, I basically have my effects pedal used as a pedal board. So if I press a button, it turns an effect on or off, but I don't have a button that can say, turn on my drive and my delay and my cavernous reverb. But with scenes, you can do that, which is pretty neat. Um, and then, yeah, for the most part, I just try and keep it where I'm getting everything that I need out of this box but at the same time, if one thing that I think has been interesting for me to note is that I don't have things overly complex or complicated. You know, the Axis FX I think is a very daunting unit for a lot of people who are don't have never used it or tried it. Um, it tends to be kind of intimidating. But you know, when you find something that you really like, for me, you know, using this uh, this this uh, 100 watt high channel plexi into this 4x12 basket weave TV mix, this is a, a amp and cab combo that is like the core of my XFX experience. You know, if this was the only amp and the only cab, I would probably be fine with it, just because I use it so much, and it's it's such a workhorse horse for me. You know, if you're somebody else who uses things a lot more differently, you can do that too. Like, that's one of the beautiful things about the XFX, is that it's so customizable and tailorable to your situation. But anyways, um, I probably should be done. This has probably been a really long video, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope that you got something from this if you have an XFX and you're kind of wondering how to set up presets and, and what are just some ways that people go about doing it. This is how I do it. This is how I have had success and it, it makes sense in my brain and it's something that has um, really worked well for me. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.